every disaster is like a gift from God! Ah! Ah! Disaster Day of Crisis was published by Nintendo themselves, but developed by Monolith Soft, the Xenosaga guys. One year before the Wii's release, they met with Nintendo's Shinji Hatano, who promised to give them creative freedom as long as their future games remained exclusive to the Wii. They wanted to do something big and epic for the release of the Wii, something different than their past games. What they came up with was an over-the-top narrative action game centered around natural disasters and it was crazy ambitious, especially considering that they only had nine months to make it. Well, that and they were months into development before they even learned about the Wii's motion controls or specs. One month before the launch of the Wii, disaster was delayed. Two years later, the now thought to be cancelled game released in Europe and Japan. What released is a 10 hour action game taking place in a single day, full of cheesy B-movie dialogue, a crazy terrorist kidnapping story with nukes, constant destruction, motion control gimmicks, and it's clearly just made with a ton of love. Full disclaimer though, Reggie of Nintendo doesn't agree with me on this one bit. He said he doesn't think it was worth $50. He called the audio and voice acting laughable. And then shortly after that interview, the North American release was cancelled. The thing is, the Metacritic scores also agree with Reggie, not me. So here, make your own mind up. This is Disaster Day of Crisis. Time to finish this movie. Here's the part where the hero kicks the bad guy's ass. The game starts at a volcano in South America where Agent Raymond Bryce, he works for Rescue Team, he's performing a rescue mission before the volcano erupts. He ends up saving the guy, but only temporarily since the volcano erupts and the helicopter gets blown up by debris. His partner Steve goes down. And Raymond passes out. After waking up, he decides to go look for Steve. Steve. Traversal in this game is kind of interesting. The stamina meter up at the top left plays a pretty big role in the game. You can run through fire without issue here, but you gotta put yourself out by shaking the controllers after, and stuff like that uses stamina. Same with fire smoke, if you walk through it, you need to clear your lungs by stopping and breathing, which uses stamina. If you run out of stamina, you can die. But you can pretty easily keep this meter filled up by eating food hidden in barrels around the levels and using inventory items. Still, it's something you need to be aware of throughout the game from start to finish, and it plays a pretty big role as the game goes on. Back to the story. Raymond ends up finding Steve, who's completely fine. The other dude that was in the helicopter is actually dead though, obviously. That's a huge issue for Raymond, whose plan is always to save everybody no matter what. Whenever somebody does die, it absolutely breaks him, but right now, they need to get off this volcano. They decide to head out on foot because... Run! The first running quick time event. The game likes making you do this. You just shake the Wiimote and nunchuck until it's over in every single one of these. Sometimes you can push B to get a speed boost, but they're all just really easy quick time events. They end up escaping the next eruption, but Steve unfortunately breaks his leg. Raymond, being the hero that he is, naturally decides to save Steve in the midst of the volcanic eruption by putting a splint into his leg, while Steve rants about how much he loves his sister. He gives Ray this thing, tells him to take care of his sister, don't let anything happen to her. Some really, really obvious foreshadowing. The volcano erupts again. The shaking ground ends up knocking Steve off a cliff edge, but Ray still isn't giving up. Okay, partner. I already told you, we can't save everyone. Uh, no! Uh, you can't! I won't let you! Uh, uh, Take care of her, Ray. You hear me? Steve! The game now fast forwards. Hurricanes at 158 miles an hour ripping through the cities and it's expected to hit Ray's town by dawn. After watching his friend die, Ray quit working for Rescue Team. He hasn't seen Steve's sister since the volcano killed his friend and he's now working a desk job with crisis management. But then he finds out about a kidnapping. This guy, Professor Davies, is a professor in seismology. He's a scientist that works in weather nonsense, basically. More obvious foreshadowing, he was kidnapped by a special forces unit called Surge that the government thought was previously wiped out. 
The professor's assistant was also kidnapped and, well, guess what? It's Steve's sister, Lisa. So Steve drops everything. He gets up from his boring desk job and heads to the base with the team to help rescue the sister. And the scientist, I guess. They decide to sneak in without using any guns, but they're immediately caught and the guns start firing. This is Ray. I'm going in. Are you nuts? You're just one man. What can you do? We're about to be introduced to the game's combat, but before that, Ray sneaks around and watches his whole team die, ignoring all the bodies with machine guns that are littering the ground. This guy goes down, so Ray goes to rescue him. This game is absolutely filled with people like this in every single area where you're free to walk around throughout the whole game, and Raymond will always stop what he's doing to save them, no matter the cost. We'll talk more about these once we get out of here. Eventually, Raymond realizes these guys aren't playing around, so he pulls out his pistol that he's had on him this entire time. Pay attention, you might learn something. For gunplay, it's a basic light gun shooter. You aim with the Wii pointer, shoot with the trigger, reload by shaking the nunchuck, and you can always take cover with the Z button. Anyway, once Raymond gets out of the burning building, he ends up on the fire escape where he sees some guy fly out of a window. Lisa, she's gotta be here. He ends up finding Lisa and the scientist, but Surge is there, and he gets surrounded by dudes with guns. Then all of a sudden, a massive earthquake comes out of nowhere. Here it comes! Impossible! It's too soon! The last guy is a boss battle where you've got to hide in cover and hit his head when he pops out. Very easy. He takes a while to kill though, and in the meantime, helicopters come and take Lisa and the scientist guy away. Premises, move to rendezvous. Roger that. Lisa, do you know him? It's the first time we met face to face. He's, he's the man who killed my brother. Great, now it's collapsing? The earthquake is still happening though, so he ends up running through a crumbling building, killing a bunch of dudes until he finally reaches the exit. Finally, Raymond escapes the building and he's surrounded by surge agents, but he gets away in a car. The first driving mission, which there are quite a lot of throughout the game, you tilt the Wiimote to steer, accelerate with two, and use the handbrake with A. The driving controls well, and it's decently fun, but nothing really happens during this specific chase, you just kinda drive. I have no issues with avoiding obstacles by tilting, it just works. Eventually, a building does collapse on top of him, and he attempts to drive under it, but... But he's okay. The car isn't though, so he proceeds on foot. This is the leader of Surge. They're moving really important containers of chemicals to use for something big, so... Ray spends quite a while walking to the Surge base to save the girl and the scientist, but he stops and saves people along the way, starting with this little kid and this guy who needs an item, a first aid kit. You find these things by breaking the boxes where you'll often find the weird food items that Ray can eat to replenish his stamina as well. Also on the long walk, he ends up coming across Surge agents spread out guarding the streets, and that's where we get some new weapons. You change them with the D-pad. There's a machine gun and a shotgun that you can swap to. The pistol has unlimited ammo, but all the other guns you get along the way do have an ammo capacity. All these weapons have their own upgrade system and skill tree, as well as variants of the guns that you can purchase later. Upgrades from Machine Gun 1 aren't carried over to Machine Gun 2, so it's hard to decide exactly how you should use your money after every mission. Raymond kills all the dudes on the streets and continues pushing forward to a subway station that leads to their base. He saves some more people along the way, obviously. These ones pop up really often. And Raymond seemingly keeps an entire aquarium inside his body at all times and can spray water from absolutely nothing in the middle of the street. You just point at the dirt and spray their wounds, and then wrap the wound in a bandage by rotating the left stick. So Raymond eventually heads down to the subway station and makes his way through it, killing more surge agents and saving civilians until he gets to the next area where he runs into the mayor who's trying to save this guy's life. We've got to get out of here. Uh, what good is a mayor who would abandon an injured citizen? <laughs> Raymond gets involved, helps save the dude, and saves a child and a fireman who's trapped in a burning building. And after that, Surge appears again to slow Raymond down from getting to their base. Oh, shit, here comes trouble. This is a sick boss battle against some armored trucks. They try to run you over if you stay out of cover too long, and they also fire missiles at Raymond that damage him even if he's in cover. Once they're down, it causes a fire around Raymond, which starts spreading, so to escape, he runs to the nearest car and... 
Where's that damn key? Here it is! Hopefully this will work. Shit. It's not working. This is a good. Gotta think quick or I'll get charred. Raymond makes his way to West Park, which is where all the survivors have been taking shelter, including the mayor from earlier. But at this point, it's also on fire, and the bridge to escape it has completely collapsed. Then, all of a sudden, a massive firestorm comes out of nowhere. Firestorms. Basically, he needs to convince everybody at the park to leave so they don't get swallowed up by the firestorm. And in order to leave, he needs their help pushing a bus out of the way that's blocking the road. This level is really cool, since most of the people here have their own little stories. Like this girl who doesn't want to leave because she lost her brother and they're supposed to meet at the park. And then the guy is stuck in the bathroom. It turns out that he's the brother, so you, you tell them and they, they come help you push the bus. It's a cool little mission, and with the power of teamwork, they manage to do it. Raymond saved every single person. Well, except... The mayor dies in a giant explosion. Everyone! Everyone! Everyone, get out! Get out! Move, people! It's not safe in here! Get out! Mr. Mayor. That's... that's them. Hang on, Lisa. Okay, a little bit more plot. So basically Surge is led by this guy, Haynes, who has a bunch of nukes and he placed them all around the US, ready to detonate at any moment. In order to make sure that doesn't happen, the president agrees to send them $200 million as well as freeing all the Surge agents that have been locked up from the past. Second, the honor of those of us who were branded as traitors will be restored by allowing the public access to classified files and exposing the truth. Okay, what does he mean by exposing the truth? Well, basically Surge was a really talented team that worked for the US Army and they were sent to South America to train new people. The US then sent orders to kill the people that they were training and Surge refused, so they were surrounded by the US Army and either burned to death or imprisoned. So the new Surge is made up of survivors from that who just want revenge on the US government for what they did. Does anyone have any idea how we deal with this? Essentially, it gives them an incredibly high-budget army while the disasters are, <clears throat> coincidentally, popping up all over the country today. The Surge guy hints that he planned for the natural disasters. Cutting back to Raymond, he's driving along the coast, but then a massive tsunami appears and more Surge agents, who begin driving in front of Raymond and throwing explosives out of the back of their truck. This driving mission is way better than the last one. You have to weave through traffic to pick the route that avoids the traffic directly behind them so you don't get hit by explosives. Eventually, he catches up to them and it's an insane shootout on a bridge while a tsunami is coming towards them. Where's Lisa? Why did you take her? Oh, I thought you were after the nukes! Whew. But you want the girl? <laughs> now don't you worry, boy. Finally, Raymond kills all the soldiers, except for this main boss guy, who was on the helicopter with Lisa earlier. Five minutes, kid. Five minutes till that tsunami hits here. We got that long to settle this. Raymond ends up defeating him in a cool boss battle where you gotta shoot him, dodge debris when he shoots the metal walkway above you, and then you just do the same thing to him. Once he's down, Raymond interrogates him to find out where Lisa is. Basically, Surge originally thought that Raymond was trying to stop their grand plan with the nukes, but little do they know, he has no idea about any of that yet. All he cares about is saving Steve's sister. But then he finds both a nuke and a detonator in the back of the car. He steals the detonator and leaves the nuke to get sunk under the incoming tsunami, which is inching closer and closer. Oh my god. Pay him back for what they did to us, Colonel!
This part where Raymond is racing the tsunami looks like a fail-proof on-rail section, but in reality it's just stupidly hard and annoying. If you make one mistake, it's over. Thankfully, again, the driving motion controls do work really well, so it's not that annoying, but this is one of the missions where failing results in you starting from the very beginning of the chase. <sighs> Once you do pass this Crash Bandicoot style section though, Raymond ends up spending the next few minutes outrunning the entire tsunami behind him in his car. Eventually, he loses control of the vehicle and he crashes it, coincidentally right beside the same subway station that was on fire earlier. Once he enters it, he's shocked to find that the fire from earlier has done what fire does and has spread. Sea of fire? Oh, this ain't good. After spending forever doing the most boring backtracking mission of all time while putting out fires, the tsunami comes crashing through the subway tunnel, but it's Raymond. He just outruns it for a while, until he ends up running up this set of stairs, which once the water reaches the top of those stairs, it just decides to stop as water does. So Raymond escapes the subway station with the nuclear detonator, but Surge isn't backing down yet. This dude appears in a helicopter. I'll tell you what, let's make a deal. You hand it over and not only will I spare you, I'll give you a lift away from that big ass wave. <laughs> Have it your way. Die! You've got to run from the helicopter and trick it into blowing up this truck so Raymond can get to cover. From cover, Raymond ends up taking out the helicopter single-handedly with only his pistol and gets away. But it's not done yet. They end up losing each other, and Raymond ends up back at this area again. He hears on the radio that there's yet another tsunami coming, and it's about to hit the city. It looks like a second tsunami will be hitting the downtown area very soon. Residents should evacuate immediately to higher ground. We but Raymond ignores this entirely, deciding to just outrun the tsunami again, which he does. Raymond is the fastest guy. He manages to get to this massive pit where 100% of the tsunami water is going into, I guess, and he jumps over it. He's safe now, but not for long. He ends up running into the helicopter again, but it's quickly taken down by the tsunami, which is back now. <laughs> The tsunami unfortunately takes Raymond down this time too though. Raymond being Raymond, he's totally fine. There is a breath meter in all the underwater sections of the game, but he can stay underwater for 2 or 3 minutes without any issue whatsoever. He's just gotta do these quick time event dodges to dodge these obstacles and climb up onto this bus. Then he can get back to saving people. He meets up with this girl sitting on a rubber life thing whose boyfriend is being swept away by the water. Raymond travels all the way down to the boyfriend to confirm that he's being swept away, and then travels all the way back up to grab the rubber ring, and then travels all the way back down again. He does save that guy, but he gets swept away by the water again. It's, it's more of this. One of the big obstacles that he dodges here is the helicopter from earlier too though, which is kind of cool. When he does reach land, the heli pilot is coincidentally there, and it's a showdown. You're gonna pay for this, pal. You're getting a burial at sea. The boss battle with him is just, you wait till he taunts you with What's wrong? You gonna die on me? and shoot him while he's doing that. You don't do any damage if you shoot him while he's not saying that. Anyway, the heli pilot manages to take the detonator and With a simple push of the button, boom! If you shoot me, boom! We go sky high! So come on, pal! Shoot me! <laughs> it's a boss battle. You can't shoot him, and you can't run. Basically, you gotta wait till he throws a grenade, shoot the grenade in the air, which for no reason spawns a large vehicle into the water, then you shoot the vehicle, which distracts the pilot into injuring himself. You do this a few times till he gets so distracted that he shoots the water tower above him, which breaks and drops onto him. And this causes a massive flood, but Raymond is okay again. He ends up washing ashore in this little area full of injured and depressed people, and all of them are the people that he saved. Even a dog that we saved in the subway is here. But guess who else is here? It's the mayor, and he's somehow okay as well. Well, I passed out in that fire, knowing it was the end. In the distance, the city is destroyed. Raymond tells the mayor that there's nukes and that he needs to alert the government right away. Communications are down, but I'll contact the government as soon as I find a way. Raymond hears Evans, one of the surge leaders, calling in to check on the guy who once owned this radio. He ends up talking to Colonel Haynes and proves yet again that all he cares about is saving the hostages. 
Well, the hostage. You will release your hostage. Do that, and I'll let you have the detonator. There's more at stake here than hostages. I don't care! There's an old geothermal power plant on Mount Rosalia. Bring the detonator. Alone. We'll make the exchange there. But it turns out the whole thing was a trap. The detonator is for one of the nukes that went underwater already. And they already have copies of it anyway. The only reason I called you here was to eliminate an obstacle to my troops' activities. <sighs> I guess I fell for it, didn't I? Reminds me of Mount Aguilas. It's not something I like seeing. I remember that, and I have no desire to see it again either. Looks like we both have bad memories. Ray, was it? Come along quietly. Surrender. How can I trust you? You don't really have a choice, do you? Then, all of a sudden, a volcano starts erupting. The shaking causes Raymond to get away again. This mission is just walking around, opening doors, performing quick time events, and shooting dudes. But eventually Raymond ends up catching up to the hostages and the three leaders of Surge. The second in command guy stays back to distract Ray for as long as possible to prevent him from getting to the hostages, and this battle goes on forever. You just take cover and shoot him over and over and over, while also shooting his throwing knives in midair to deflect them back at him for massive damage. Eventually he chases you around these walkways and you dodge his sniper fire, but anyway, once Raymond finally has him pinned, Lava starts melting through the walls of the building and it's separate. Yeah. Damn it! <laughs> Wait! Ah. Hey, in case you're wondering, we're headed for Bainesville next. I look forward to seeing you there, Ray. What's he playing at? I better clear out. Then the lava melting through the walls of the building forces Raymond to retreat. It blocks the exits that are meaningless to Raymond because he can just punch his way through anything and it kills enemies that are around and causes constant explosions. It kind of helps you. After exiting, the volcano causes yet another massive explosion, destroying helicopters and everything around it. The eruption has begun. Raymond hops in the nearest vehicle and begins out running and avoiding the lava so he doesn't get buried by the pyroclastic flow. He ends up driving up a slope, which is supposed to prevent lava from getting to him, just like the staircase with the water, but unfortunately, the lava. I doubt the flow will make it here. <sighs> Don't tell me. swallows his vehicle. Back at the president's office, the president is having a really bad day. Back to Raymond. Raymond, he's he's all right. Lungs feel like they're on fire. Uh. <coughs> uh. <coughs> Looks like I avoided a direct hit. So Raymond then travels down the area that the lava destroyed. This is basically a time mission, because if you breathe in too much smoke, you die. Once he gets to this bridge, he falls down it over and over, but eventually makes it across. Good thing too, because now there's a massive bear. Volcanic ash is raining. Gases are spewing from the ground. Raymond passes out in front of this house. God damn it. He wakes up later inside of the house, where this little blonde girl gives him a coffee. Here, have this. Her name is Iris. I'm Iris. Her parents never came home after the eruption. Raymond's now in a tricky situation. If he stays here, they're both gonna die from the lava flow next time it rains. And she doesn't want to leave because her parents still aren't home. Eventually, he convinces her to let him use her mom's car by telling her that her parents will never make it through the volcanic ash. They're gonna drive to a safe location. Good. Now, do you have a car? Yeah, my mom's is in the garage. Wait here. After spending a hundred hours opening the garage door and getting the power on and filling it with gas and oh my god, this never ended. Iris gives Raymond a satellite phone and they head out. A satellite phone? Uh, no signal. Must be the ashes. It starts off as a mostly smooth drive, but eventually they hit lava. Is that lava? Here we go. 
and the car breaks down in the middle of a forest. Iris, we gotta walk. Iris waits for Raymond while he goes down to look for a road to escape. This is pretty cool. If you want to clear your lungs, you gotta go underneath a tree which protects you from the volcanic ash. Doesn't make any sense, but that's okay. The part where smokes blast through the ground exactly where you want to walk is absolutely evil. Some of these are just completely unavoidable, but anyway, once he makes it through, he finds the exit, and then he heads back to grab Iris. I think I found a way out. Can you walk? Yeah. Shit. Ugh, God damn it. I'll go check it out. Can you wait here? Eventually, Ray finds a set of train tracks and decides that's the best route. But first, he gets in a fight with a bear and wins. Up the hill where Iris once was, she's now gone, and the bear is back. Ray fights the bear and wins, and continues looking for Iris. Iris! Thank God! Ray! Are you alright? I'm okay. But look! I found a railroad track! I think we can get down from over there. Unfortunately, a surge helicopter appears and sees them. It starts firing missiles at Raymond while he jumps across a train, and eventually, he blows up the helicopter using only his guns, and then heads back to Iris. Iris. They end up getting stuck and need to move this train car. There's this metal thing on the track. To get rid of it, Ray uses a metal shovel that he found and scoops up the lava, then pours it onto the metal that was blocking the train. Perfect. They continue on their journey downward, but unfortunately, lava starts coming towards them yet again. Ray ends up separated from Iris, but just punches a bridge made of barrels for her. They outrun the lava and make it out. Suddenly, it starts raining. It's starting to rain. Not good. The rain's black. Yeah. At least it's making the air a lot easier to breathe. You rescue people, right? Will you be able to save everyone? Yeah. I'll save everyone. I promise. Now come on. Right. Save everyone? How? Can I really do that? They keep walking, but then Iris disappears and a Lahar shows up. Oh no! The Lahar! It's been raining even longer on street! Damn! I gotta keep my focus! Iris! He catches up to Iris and attempts to save her, but then she's swept away by the water. Raymond then just jumps into the water. Iris! It's okay, partner. I already told you. We can't save everyone. Iris! No! Ugh! Using his special flurry of dolphin kicks, Raymond narrowly avoids collisions with rocks and catches up to her. You saved me! I did, didn't I? I guess I can save some people after all. All right, Steve. I'm ready now. Once they make it to safety, he then arranges for a helicopter to take Iris to a safe spot. They'll help find her mom and her dad. Raymond hops in the plane and he's flying for a while and they're finally over Bainesville, but the terrain is too rough to land. So now Raymond is going skydiving. Are you nuts? He grabs a parachute, stumbles, and accidentally opens the giant door thing, causing the parachute to fly out. After running back into the plane, he grabs another parachute, and then he jumps out. For the parachuting game, you just shake the right thing to move right, and you shake the left thing to go left. You just have to keep Raymond centered, until he lands in Banesville. Once he's there, he kills a ton of surge units non-stop and saves some people. Outside the window, Raymond spots a surge boat, and there's a dam that's about to explode by the way, so Raymond wants that boat. Back down on the street, remember how there's a dam that's about to explode? Well. Raymond runs towards the water, saves a dog's life, and then outruns the water again. 
Shortly after though, another wave starts coming towards him. He tried to save this guy in the back of this truck who's passed out, but this happens. And then this happens. So he's dead. Anyway, Raymond heads into the Surge HQ area, killing everybody along the way, and learns that Lisa is at the church. We still have no reply from the government. Hey, Sir, here. the people of Miami have been ordered to evacuate because of the hurricane. Human losses will be minimal. Please make the decision. Prepare to activate the nuclear weapon. You two are nothing but trouble. Get going! Have it your way. Professor! Lock her in the church. It's kind of funny, Serge doesn't actually need the doctor's assistant, Lisa, anymore. They, they literally already killed the doctor. Raymond continues on. He kills everybody and ends up stealing that boat and driving it to the church. Unfortunately though, this guy is here. Boss guy. He just goes through a bunch of looping attacks. Use the turret, shoot, jump around and shoot, jump on top of you, rinse repeat. Raymond ends up winning the fight, but the guy still gets away. So Raymond makes it to the church. I'm finally here. But then he gets distracted by some kids on a rooftop and gets held up at gunpoint by Surge. So like we said earlier, the Surge guys are mad because the US government killed all of their guys and wiped them out. But they don't actually want to kill civilians. So using the kids, Raymond convinces the boss guy to send a helicopter to save those kids on the roof. And that shows him that Raymond's a good person, which... Colonel! I was told the soldiers of Surge are the proudest there are. What a bunch of crap! Do you have a shred of pride left, or are you lowlifes just shaking down the government for money? Is this really how you want to be remembered? What the hell do you know? My men who died were all fine, proud soldiers. The homeland we fought for turned on us, and good men died in a filthy betrayal your government engineered. We watched our comrades burn to death in a sea of fire, and we swore our revenge. Mark my words, nothing will sway us from that oath. Do not dare insult them. Then please, do the right thing. You're the only one who can save those kids. Colonel. Send out the helicopter and save those children. Colonel. You son of a... What the hell's wrong with you? Major, you have your orders. Affirmative, sir. Stand down, soldier. Stand down. Throw this man in there. Thank you, sir. The same prison where they put the body of Dr. Weather Science Guy. The Surge team wants to activate all the nukes since the US didn't pay them the money they requested. Raymond's speech earlier really changed the Colonel's perspective on things though. He ends up changing his mind entirely, calling off the attack and killing a bunch of the Surge people. Drop the gun, Banks. Push the button now, sir. If you won't push it, then I will. The mission is aborted. Son of a bitch! Oh! I'll kill you! Didn't anyone teach you to obey your superiors? Colonel?
Raymond is now in prison, and then his prison cell starts flooding. So he grabs a crowbar that they conveniently left in his cell and breaks his way through the crumbling prison walls. He escapes the church, then he breaks back into the church, steals back his weapons, and storms in through the front door. His surge inside? Lisa too? Inside the church, he shoots literally every single person that he sees, and while he's doing that, Lisa gets handcuffed to this heater thing by this guy with the keys. Raymond kills a bunch more people, including the guy with the key, who then falls into the water and gets trapped under a chair. He's too inconvenient to move, so Raymond just heads upstairs to save Lisa! Ray! What are you doing here? Oh. One of them has the key to these handcuffs. Oh my god. So the water's rising and the church is completely flooded at this point. He swims to the key guy, but it turns out the key floated away. God, Raymond. He finds it for some reason in the other corner of the room and then heads back up to save Lisa, whose head is now submerged under the water. They smash a window and they swim outside, but... <sighs> Lisa! Hey, Ray! The Colonel's dead! What?! Yeah, I plugged him, but you ought to hang out with us a little longer. We're headed to Port Alex next. It wouldn't be the same without you. <laughs> See you there! You psycho! <sighs> so Raymond hops in his car and drives through the flood until he gets to Port Alex. He ends up chasing this car through the flooded city, hoping to follow it all the way to Port Alex, but unfortunately, scaffolding falls on the car, so he's got to figure out a way there on foot. He sees Evans up ahead, so he kills everybody in the way to try to get to him. Eventually, he catches up to Evans, but then Evans flies away in a helicopter yet again. So then Raymond walks through the hurricane, saves people's lives, walks across the beams of this broken bridge while cars are being picked up and thrown around. I don't know how his weight is holding him to this bridge, but the bridge part is anxiety inducing. The wind is constantly blowing Raymond and you've got to navigate really small walkways for a really long time. If you fall, you have to do it from the beginning again. But finally, he makes it across and continuing to follow the direction that he thinks the helicopter went, Raymond ends up in some stupidly heavy winds. This level is full of a bunch of traversal and wind puzzles, like this one where you gotta hide behind the cars while gusts of wind happen. He makes his way to the bridge. Helicopter is on the other side of it. After he kills everybody, he sees this crane and adjusts it to get across the broken bridge. He finally makes his way to Evans and Lisa. I can't wait. He'll be here soon. Your plan is finished. Why not just give up? Finished? Nothing's finished. We still have one nuke. We can threaten the government again, or we can set it off and have a nice flashy explosion. And what would that accomplish? Well, at the very least, it would kill the boredom. The whole calm, devoted follower thing. It was all an act, wasn't it? No, you're wrong. I always respected the Colonel. <sighs> However, I must admit, with all the excitement going on, it does give me a rush. Here he comes! Damn it, they were waiting for me. I knew you'd make it, Ray! Where's Lisa? Right here! Okay, now tell him. Forget about me and save yourself! You're the heroine, right? That's your line. Ray! Kill these jerks and save me! Leave it to me. Finally, the president sends reinforcements to help even the playing field while Raymond pushes his way to Lisa. The reinforcements are wiping Surge out entirely. It's about to end. But then Evans takes Lisa into a car this time instead of a helicopter and drives away to a ferry nearby. Raymond makes his way there. Quick time event kills this guy. He shoots people guarding the boat. He kills everybody on the boat. And the boat's moving now, so backup can't arrive. So he loses communication with everybody back on the island. It's all up to Raymond now. He fights his way upstairs, killing non-stop enemies until he reaches the top of the boat. Where's Lisa? Locked in a cabin. Now we're free to fight without any distractions. Isn't that nice? I can't figure you out. You intentionally call me after you, then recklessly launch your ship in this situation. What the hell's wrong with you? Oh, I'll tell you. If, uh, you can beat me. <clears throat> the boss battle with Evans is crazy annoying. He ends up hopping in a mech, and you gotta shoot him over and over again while he goes through all his attack phases until he suddenly tries to grab you. 
You've got this really quick window of time to shoot Evans while this is happening, and if you miss it, you gotta do it again. You have to use the pistol to shoot him too. It's really weird. Once you finally beat him, he begins falling towards the water. But Evans is okay. Ray ends up shooting him, which is nothing more than a minor inconvenience for Evans, but then the hurricane picks up. It ends up blowing Ray almost entirely off the boat, but he grabs on for his life. Tell me, Ray! You ever get scared as a kid when a storm would come? I did, but I was excited even more. When this mission started, I felt like I did when I was a kid. Earthquakes, tsunamis, eruptions, floods. And now a hurricane? <laughs> and all this was your idea of a good time? Uh, yeah, I didn't really care about the mission. I just wanted the fun to last. <laughs> I don't want it to end yet. You sick bastard. <laughs> Say whatever you want. Helpless humans can do nothing before this natural violence except acknowledge it. If you fear it, then show it respect. Because every disaster is like a gift from God! Ah! Ah! You're wrong, Evans. Humans aren't helpless. We can stand together. We have the power to save each other. But then, ah! the hurricane stops. What the hell? Ray climbs back onto the boat and punches Evans directly in the face. Time to finish this movie. Here's the part where the hero kicks the bad guy's ass. After an extremely long hand-to-hand -hand combat quick time event, Evans escapes and ducks around the corner, grabbing the nuke detonator and a gun. He arms the nuke. Time for this plutonium packed firecracker to go off, Ray. He then throws the laptop off the side of the boat, but then we'll watch the greatest show on earth. Together, from front row center. Guess who appears on the boat? Colonel? It's the Colonel. He's somehow alive and he somehow got onto this boat. So yeah, the Colonel kills Evans and he thankfully knows how to detonate the nuke, which I mean, I don't know how they were gonna watch the explosion on the boat since the nuke is actually on this boat. Evans was so dumb. The nuke is downstairs on the flooded boat. So Ray jumps into the water down there, swims over to this truck, pulls out the nuke, and then drags it out before calling the colonel. The colonel then step by step walks Ray through the disarming of the nuke. The colonel obviously knows all the codes and wires that need to be cut for their own nuke, so Ray just follows along with what he's told to do, and eventually the now sinking boat begins sinking even faster. The water begins pouring into the boat. Raymond outruns it entirely, getting upstairs to the upper deck. The three of them spot a lifeboat, but somebody needs to remain on the boat to lower the lifeboat. What a horribly designed boat. The colonel stays back though, promising to hop on the boat once it's lowered. Hurry up, colonel! Come on! We're nearly out of the storm zone. Make sure you don't get swallowed by the waves after making it this far. Colonel! The colonel just stands on the boat until it sinks. I have no idea why. Ray apologizes to Lisa about what happened to Steve before giving her the thing. A rescue helicopter then appears and picks them up and it's all just a big happy ending for everybody. The mayor is still alive. Iris finds her mom and dad, who survived the chaos. The government pays out the families of the Surge members for their wrongdoings of the past and Ray and Lisa, well, they visit Steve's grave where Raymond tells Lisa that He's going to be rejoining Rescue Team. Even if you can't always save everyone, as long as there are people within reach, you have to try. And that's the end of the game. The worst day in American history. I think Disaster may just be the single greatest story-based game on the Wii, and it's a shame that the entire North American release was cancelled for no good reason. What did you guys think though? Are you going to play it? These videos that sum up entire games take forever to make, by the way, so if you got this far, it'd be amazing if you did the things that help small channels out. I'd love that. But until next time. Thanks for watching guys. Love you and peace.